Nitanu, Nitanaganya, Ikanaita Siha, Mansamoru.
día Putejita ota ota Manteni fina no guin manyay nata Koko siya Niti nem tunia Azuda ifa maguonta Fangay respeto Islota Sia Mariona Samoru, 
Buenas and saludo, half a day para todos, Hamzu. Uh, again, I would like to welcome everyone to the, today's event. Sorry, we started a little bit late, but we we're out ready to go. Um, I just want to, again, remind everyone, just like a few ground rules before we begin. Uh, we kindly ask that everyone would turn on their cameras just so we know who we're talking to, to uh, kind of make this a little bit more personal. Um, we also uh, ask you to label your name so that way we know who's here and who's being represented. And as well, there will be times for, where we ask everyone to participate, and we really highly encourage everyone to please participate. We uh, that's that's the whole point of this event is to get uh, to get our opinions out there. Uh, but that uh, that will be there will be um, um, times for that throughout the day. So again, talo si just masi talo ni finaston mizo. We greatly appreciate it here at the commission. I uh, before we begin, I just want to introduce myself. Ina anhu si Cody Lizama. I am my name is Cody Lizama. I am uh, one of the employees here at the Chamorro Language Commission, I am uh, very proud to be a part of this project to help present this, this dictionary to our people to our uh, and to our island. And uh, we'll go ahead and begin. So just to kind of explain to uh, everyone how this is going to work. So the first, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is day one of the uh, of three days where we will be presenting on different topics throughout the, that we found inside this dictionary. We, would, uh, it's, we wanna basically have a great conversation uh, with the public about what is inside this dictionary, what's the purpose of it, and most especially what, uh, what, what we can see for the future of this dictionary. Um, we have with us many uh, guests and I, want, I would like to recognize right now. Um, first of all, I would like to recognize, of course, uh, our Get Hilo, si Senora Hope Cristobal, who's here. Uh, again, and for our Bisa Gehilo, si Senora, uh, si Saina Laura Sauder. I would like to recognize si Senora Rosa Palomo, who is also one of the members of the Chamorro Language Commission, si Dosma si Senora Nifinatomo. Uh, and we have also here with us our administrator, si Senora Anne-Marie. And uh, again, I would like to point out if there's anyone here that uh, I missed that we, uh, we should absolutely recognize, uh, feel free to let me know and uh, we, would, uh, we will definitely do so. So as you guys are all, as everyone can see right now, right, uh, uh, what we're looking at is the cover of our new dictionary for volume one. This is going to, this is the Chamorro language, the Chamorro cultural dictionary, which again, we are, as a commission, we are very happy and proud to present to the people of Guam and to the people, uh, to our Chamorro people. Uh, again, we are the Chamorro language commission. And so I, uh, again, would like to recognize all the members that are here, and uh, as I mentioned already before. Uh, those who are not present right now, but probably will be joining in uh, later, I uh, would like to recognize si Senora Flores, Teresita Concepcion Flores, si Pali Felix, Bito, uh, Felix Beto uh, Leon Guerrero, si Senora Rufina uh, Fejeren Mendiola, si Senora Jimmy Santosteria, si Dr. R uh, Robert Underwood, and si Senora Melvin Juan Pat Borra. All right. Again, these are the members of the Chamorro Language Commission with, of course, our Gehilo Si Senora Ho Cristobo. Of course, I've, I want to offer, of course, a uh, Donculun agradecimento to our Magahaga, 
Um, she has supported us all the way through through this entire project. And I, of course, I'm going to give recognition to the Minat Chen Tai Sais na Lista Turan Guahan, the 36th Guam Legislature, we are Sujus Masi Parashia. And of course, this project is supported by the National Endowment, oh, excuse me, this project is supported by the Humanities Guahan and the National Endowment for the Humanities. And again, Talu, Dunkulun na Sujus Masi Parashia. While we're, uh, while we're on this topic, by the way, we are live streaming on Facebook right now. And if you haven't done so already, please like and share our page on uh, Facebook. We are also found on Instagram and as well as YouTube. And all this will be, uh, be able to be found there. Without further ado, excuse me. Without further ado, I would like to begin our discussion uh, with, um, with a few short introductions again with uh, uh, our Gehilo, Si Sinora Hope Cristobal. Si Sinora Hope Cristobal is our Gehilo. She is... Um, one of uh, one of the more, uh, I want to say, uh, I wish I could say a lot more about her biography, but just for time's sake, we'll cut, we'll cut it short. No, say not a thousand But uh, um, she is a former senator, and she very proudly is nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. So let's go ahead and give a donkulun kanai to Sinora, because again, we appreciate her presence here, and especially for her work. So just say Sinora. And of course, I would like to give recognition to our dear Saina Lo. Uh, Saina Lo, again, her too, I would like to say the entire life story of her, but unfortunately we don't have enough time for that. But I do want to mention that, of course, at least, at least mention that she is our Bisa Gehilo in the Kumishon. She has been a longtime teacher and writer, and I'm pretty sure we have all seen or read her works at some point in our lives, uh, if not more than once. And uh, she is also currently a contributor to the uh, Guam Daily Post, uh, in her column, uh, and lastly, on our last person on our panelists, we I would like to um, give recognition to is Sinora Anne Marie Arceo. So Sinora Anne Marie again is um, more famously known as the founder of Chief Forao Academy. She is also a very a long time te uh, teacher and uh, educator within our community, and as well as our administrator, I, our administrador inside the Tamil Language Commission. So, and without further ado, I would like to begin our discussions for today, uh, if no one objects. Uh, for so, for today, our three panelists will discuss the following questions. And I would ask Saina Hope Cristobal if she wouldn't mind going ahead to read our first. Uh, two questions to bring to discussion. Uh, dispenser, sir, I got you. Dispenser, is that the Pazuzuni to be a STE? Ah, me guy, uh, Zantunisti computer. So if you need a question, actually, this is uh, STE next uh, three sessions, part of group as a partner. Uh, our uh, session is really um, a part of our requirement for our humanities grant. And so we want to um, uh, share the, the purpose of the project, uh, which is what prompted the Commission to undertake this, this particular project. Uh, and I think I kind of gave or alluded to that uh, yesterday, uh, Cody. Um, we have a lot of projects and one of our mandates uh, in, um, in getting this commission off the ground uh, in 2016 under the Chamorro Heritage uh, Act um, that um, became um, actually uh, very active in 2017 uh, under Governor Calvo at the time. And so um, one of our uh, mandates is to update the tomorrow uh, or our dictionary. And like I've stated, uh, Senora Rosa apprised the uh, commission that there are quite a few uh, dictionaries that are already um, been in place over the, um, the uh, years that uh, uh, people started writing. And uh, Rosa had brought that to light um, to the cooperation of the mark uh, she was able to get copies of these old dictionaries and we've looked them over, but also something was happening about two years ago and uh, we were getting calls of, um, so what does this mean? And people would uh, propose sayings and stuff like, oh, I, I've been around for 
75 years, I've heard uh, many of these sayings. And so we uh, got to talking and the encouragement by our Bisa Gehelu, Loling Sauder said, you know, let's do this. Um, I think it's going to be a great addition for our people who are uh, learning um, to write. We had just in 2020 printed our um, updated uh, orthography booklet uh, to help people to write the Chamorro language much better and, and uh, start standardizing our uh, spelling system. So um, these um, sayings would uh, come upon us. And, um, and of course, we then decided to entertain uh, a book that would explain these um, cultural sayings uh, that, that happen um, in our lifetime. And many of us remembered what our grandparents said or what our great grandparents told us. And so we started co uh, collecting these sayings and we've decided uh, to contextualize them and put them in a book form, which is um, really uh, uh, the work of now our employees, uh, Cody and but prior to that, Dr. Fran Naputi uh, grabbed the idea and said, let's go for it. And she wrote up a grant from the Guam uh, Humanities Guahan. And uh, here it is, our volume one. And we are just ever so grateful that we were able to find um, folks in our community who are interested uh, in participating. And we hope we'll get a lot more uh, people who are interested in, in promoting and revitalizing tomorrow uh, in our community. Uh, but also um, we found out there's a lot of interest by uh, organizations away from Guam who have joined us in, in another um, forum of which Lolling Heads, uh, which is the GIHA uh, platform that allows other cultural organizations to come forward with ideas. So um, I'm just gonna jump into uh, the next question, which is given all the projects that, ha that are being undertaken by the Commission, why was the Cultural Dictionary a priority? And I think what it is, is a response uh, to our, our current, um, the contemporary times. Like I said, two years ago, uh, or shortly before that, we had an election and there were all kinds of terms being um, discussed out there. And so we decided to take those and uh, put it in a book form and help um, people who are writing perhaps for the first time. Maybe if you are writing a story and you want to uh, make a, a, um, a context more vivid, uh, you use some of these sayings. And so really that's the purpose. We think that it's it will fill a, a kind of a void that is out there rather than just words. We now have sayings that we have heard our grandparents use um, either among um, you know, members of the same family or outside the family. And so like I've stated yesterday, a lot of, a lot of these uh, outbursts occurred during the election, elections. Um, but also we hear it as a form of um, Cassie, you know, uh, our loving grandparents would sometimes um, provide this as a, a gist, as a, as a way of entertainment or saying something to enlighten a situation. So really, I think uh, you're going to enjoy the Cultural Dictionary. I think it's going to be a publication that uh, a lot of people will want and need. After our meeting yesterday, I immediately got some uh, feedback from the crowd and people were asking, uh, how about this saying and that saying? And of course, again, we encourage um, all people who are here today to please uh, participate, uh, tell us what you think, uh, but also if you have sayings that you've been keeping or hanging on to, uh, please share that with us and we can both learn the commission as well as uh, yourself. Uh, we, we work together very hard. You know, the commission meets every week. We are one of those commissions that uh, has set aside our Thursdays uh, and uh, we have work sessions and then we have board meetings. 
Uh, but uh, we are also very fortunate that a lot of learned people about Chamorro linguistics and about Chamorro uh, revitalization are still around. So we got to capture all of this great stuff and, and put it in a book form and share it with everyone who can't be here uh, at that moment that, um, you know, activities are happening where the, uh, the, the amusement of uh, the cultural sayings is going on. Uh, we ourselves had a great time putting the context uh, together for a better understanding, a better appreciation of using the, the uh, cultural uh, sayings. And um, it was a very enjoyable uh, experience for myself, as well as, uh, you know, Loling, uh, Terry and Rosa and Polly and others that uh, would drop in and, and share sayings that they themselves have encountered. So without further ado, Cody Dispensa Zu, Lo Tungwa Na Si Saina Lo always has uh, good words to impart on our project because she herself, uh, we've all burned the midnight oil of this project, which we enjoy. Yeah. I would like to actually bring it down to, to Saina uh, Laura's daughter Sauter. Saina, you know, I, uh, I would like to actually uh, read these questions out for you if you don't mind, and then we could uh, probably discuss it from there. So how does a study of concepts and phrases contribute to a deeper understanding of traditional cultural practices and values that are central to the tomorrow identity and way of life? So I would like to ask if any of our panelists would like to contribute to that, those, uh, sign a little uh, put for board. Anant needs to unmute. That's okay. I need to unmute too, yes. Uh, concepts and phrases are the way that people convey ideas, stories, um, you know, ways of thinking and knowing, ways of putting uh, things in the world together. Uh, generally, we talk about uh, concepts and phrases as being the informants of our mata, our insight about our culture. We know about how our ancestors thought about things, organized things, related to things by the way that they constructed speech around these things, right? So they, they really do reveal to us the humor of our ancestors, the creative use of metaphors, the use of um, you know, they would make fun of things, they would name things, they would have sayings to teach lessons. So these, these uh, concepts and phrases that are included in uh, the first volume, of the cultural dictionary and will be included in multiple volumes that follow, we hope, are a way, are kind of a window to our cultural way of knowing. When people say, what is the Chamorro, what is Chamorro? What is the Chamorro way of knowing? We, we can answer that question through the words of our ancestors, through the words of our elders, through the words of our manaina, as they have told us what is important to them. The values that are important, uh, the, the, uh, the beliefs and values, which are part of the Hinengi section. Then we also have a Sinangan section, which are the lessons that they want us to learn through sayings or the humor that they bring to a situation, which is revealed in the sayings. So those are the Sinangan. And then of course we have Kustumbri, which are the traditions and the customs like Tinsuli, that are uh, far more uh, complex than the single than the single word implies. No, so we dig deep uh, into the word to understand its full meaning, the historical context, or the situation in which this uh, word has meaning, and um, that's what the cultural dictionary has attempted to do. And we've uh, engaged the services of writers. Uh, English writers as well as a Chamorro as Chamorro writers to illuminate these ideas that we hear swimming around that we may not always fully understand. The Chamorro language is very metaphorical, is very allegorical, and we don't really uh, fully appreciate that until we examine carefully the kinds of sayings that 
convey these metaphors and these uh, allegories. And then what can we learn from them about our indigenous beliefs and the Tomoro Mata? Um, we can learn a lot because there's a lot of subtlety that's embedded in these sayings. There's a lot of subtlety in the way that these sayings are used to describe situations that are either appropriate or inappropriate. So there's a lot of lesson to be learned from, from, the, way, from the words that, that, that we have learned from our manyana and the way that they use these words to convey meaning, to convey significance, to convey ideas about what they think are important or not. So um, it's, a, it's really been a, an incredible journey and we invite you to take that journey with us as we hear uh, Anne-Marie talk about revitalization and how this connects to revitalization. And then Desiree will be, one of our writers will be sharing her experience uh, relative to the journey she took as she engaged as a writer in discovering the, the deeper meaning of each of these sayings and, and, uh, and concepts. So I'm gonna try to turn it over now to Sinora and Marie. Sinora, um, if, uh, if you don't mind me saying, what value does this research on terms and sayings have for tomorrow revitalization efforts? You have so much background behind that. So I think that you would be, you would, uh, be very good to answer this question for us. Well, um, I'd like to start with saying that uh, language learning today is very, very different from how we learned it years ago from our elders, from our, our the Manamko and our Manaina. Everything was always transferred orally. And a lot of these terms here, a lot of these proverbs, if you will, um, uh, and pa'a have been transferred down. And now we are able to put it literally in book form for people to read. It's not like before where this knowledge is just transferred on orally from how many times we hear it, you know, taggy, zamunga madagi, right? You hear it constantly, constantly. And sometimes as we're growing up, as I was growing up, I never really understood what that meant until I became an adult. And so now we bridge this oral, our, our, our uh, elders, orality of being poetic in these forms and transfer it to uh, uh, literacy now where we could still learn and still take advantage of technology today. And so in some more revitalization, this, these sayings will prompt curiosity of words that we don't hear every day. You know, even I myself, there's some words in these, in these proverbs that are used in, in ways that I've never heard before. And so it prompts me as a learner to dig a little deeper, to ask more questions, to reach out to an elder and say, Hoffa, and this starts conversations, you know, about these. And that's all part of revitalization is to bring it to the forefront, to talk about it and bring it to life rather than just reading it somewhere and then storing it. It, it, uh, the book will become a conversational piece, you know, among generations or the different ages through generations. And so um, that's what this can do towards language revitalization. Now we have it in book form. Maybe we can even, I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm dreaming again, right? We can move it to an audio form so that people know how to hear, to, to say it and pronounce it correctly. Uh, and that's easily done with the technology we have today, just a moment on the phone and you know, uh, we can we can record it so it's made possible orally. And then we have a young uh, lot. I see some um, people from the diaspora here. They have knowledge and technology that, and they're hungry to learn. They can help us and add to this, right, Sky, <laughs> Skyler and Jay. Uh, we can take this and record it and put some animation to it. There's lots more we can do. Uh, towards language revitalization from just the onset of this book. Again, before we go into the next question, I do want to recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Robert Underwood. He is also one of the members of the commission. And of course, he's Jimmy Terrier. Uh, he's also here with present with us. To, and he is also again one of our members. So just want to say, I'm and so, you know, I believe you open, you answered this one already, but I'm just going to go ahead and answer just to throw it out there. But how, how can the cultural dictionary promote the learning of the of Chamorro language? Because I, I think we understand that, you know, 
of, of course, a dictionary helps a language grow, helps a language um, increase, or at least it become stronger because at least now it's written and now we have a, we have a resource to go back to. But why specifically one about saying? You know, is it, uh, why do you, why do we need one about an entire sentence rather than just keep keep on going with what we've been usually doing with word by word? One by word. word. Okay. Well, it's a, it has meaning now. It has context rather than just learning the words that. The chat, the, it's good to learn words and build vocabulary, but if we don't know how to use it in our daily lives or what it means to, to put it into real life world language, then it's just vocabulary, you know? I can know all my colors and my shapes, but if I don't know how to use that in my daily life, then um, it makes, it's just, they're just vocabulary. But in the cultural dictionary with something like this, we're learning uh, uh, phrases and words with meaning, with purpose. Okay. And because uh, uh, language should be learned lightly and in a very fun and loving way, a lot of these proverbs are fun and, and funny and crazy, or, or like Sana Lo and Sana Hope said, um, uh, but lawn, right? We could use it and bring back some of that, that character, but be careful. You know, we have to be careful how we use it because it could also come across, you know, depending on the situation to be disrespectful. So that also talks to cultural, cultural revitalization, you know, how, when to use it and when not to use it and who to use it with, with peers or with Saina. So uh, this cultural dictionary takes a very, very different, um, pivots off of a very different way of, of inviting people to learn language, inviting people to make it be a part of their lives and seeing that it comes from truly from our manyana and our elders uh, means so much because it also has, has so many colorful cultural contexts in it and culture and language can never be separated. And so I believe that that's the value that this cultural dictionary uh, brings for our people, both here and all the tomorrows all over the world. And I, before we, uh, before we go on, I do want to introduce one of our writers, but I kind of want to explain to everyone how this, um, the, how this dictionary actually happened. So we, the commission uh, compiled a list of different phrases, different words that we believe needed much more description and much more ex, um, explanation, especially for those of us like myself who are all learners. And so we, we compiled this list and there's a very, very long list, I'll tell you. And of course we had to go, we had to go in there and figure out which ones we can, we had to weed out for now and then push off to another project. Then eventually we were able to take some of those things and kind of task uh, three writers, three researchers to go out into the community. So that way it's not just the commission that's producing this, but it's actually Actually, a work of the community, a work of the people, and that we uh, then they would go out there and ask our manamko, ask those who are speakers, where where have you heard this context? What's the what's the appropriate with this saying? Uh, and many different ways to to use. And so one of those writers, and I'm very proud to introduce her, I have si Senora Desiree Taimanglo Ventura. So and I she's here right now, and I will I'm going to give her a short introduction in a second, but. Uh, so you know, again, we thank you for your work. It's a, it was, I'm pretty sure it was a, it was a joy to do, and it was a joy having to work with you for this, uh, for this project. Uh, so, again, I'll take some time to introduce her. See, Senora Desiree Tamenglo Ventura, Familian Amasak, is that right? And uh, Familian Deza. Senora Desiree is a press editor at the University of Guam and was chosen by the Commission to research and write about many say different sayings and words for this dictionary, including, and some of you, some of you may have heard these, Natautautumano, Menhalum, and even, of course, our uh, favorite, Inafat Maule. Of course, I would like to invite si Senora Desiree to speak a little bit now about her experience as a writer and, what, uh, and, uh, and about what this, what this project meant to her being, uh, being a part of it. So just Masi. Um, I, I get intimidated in front of the commission, but um, I was intimidated even just with this project before when I was, you know, I do so much writing, um, but I have always had my, my elders to kind of ask and my grandmothers are both gone and my uncle Frankie passed away. And those were my three Sina that 
I always ask. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, um, will I have elders to ask, you know? Um, but our island is so beautiful because everybody lent me their manana. Our manana is all around us. And so Hagadnya McDonald's is a wonderful resource. <laughs> um, but I really did find that um, even when the elders closest to us are gone, like our elders are so loving and we are equipped to continue this work. We're, we're equipped to, to preserve what we're, we're meant to preserve. Um, so when I first got the list, I noticed a lot of the, the sayings that I had already known, heard my, my grandparents say were on it, and I immediately heard their voices. Uh, even the critical ones, like uh, Zhao Zhao was one, and I remember my grandma always used to say, Ina Zhao Zhao Hao, or um, Da Dao, and things like that. So I was like, oh, I, I can do this. I know some. Um, and that's where I began. So the first question, that I'm supposed to address is my my resources, um, and so yeah, the the our prime my primary resource really was our elders. We're an oral people, and so it makes the most sense to start orally. I I first sat down and I looked at the list and I crossed off everything that I already had a personal context for that I had heard before. Um, and I just made some notes. And then for the, the phrases that I wasn't really sure of, like fabulous, duchispas and stuff, I, I sat and I had to just break it down like with the Chamorro I knew. I knew what some of the phrases literally meant, but I wasn't sure what context to use them for. And so I started with the ones I knew first, um, writing on my own. And then I had to go out and find elders. Um, and I'm so grateful for Cody and Sina Lo and Sina Hope and Sina Anne Marie because I they were so supportive of me through this process and finding the right elders. Um, even Alyssa Cruz, who also works for the Commission, her grandmother made herself available to me. So many other people's elders um, were happy to talk to me about these phrases, and I just can't thank them enough for that. But I started with the ones I knew, the ones I could break down and translate literally on my own. And then I had to get out there. I had to get out there and, and ask questions that sometimes I didn't know they were inappropriate. I didn't know um, that all of, you know, some of the phrases on the list, I would ask an uncle, and why are you asking me that? Because maybe they were vulgar, you know, um, and I didn't know. And so I did a lot of sitting down with uncles that I don't usually spend a lot of time with like I went to the barbecue pit where it smells like beer and smoke and and I sat with them and then I crashed Hagatya McDonald's men sitting around and asked them and then um I found myself calling a lot of old like there was one phrase I don't know if it made it in this one Gole Hoggett um, which was particularly hard for me. And I, I found myself calling as many men from Agate as I could find. And that was really interesting. <laughs> I, I got to know a lot of people, um, but I started with them. And after I got enough oral insight from, from different people, and I didn't want to just ask one person because I know that people use phrases in different ways. So I asked different people, compiled it as best I could. And then I started to look at more formal resources. Um, Polly, um, Polly Eric's blog, um, the Halitas, every, every tomorrow resource I could find. And luckily I'm here with Victoria at the press. We're, we're in the MARC, the Micronesian Area Research Center. So I had, I did have access to a lot of older documents and things to kind of look through it. And that was really helpful to me. And Cody also really directed me toward other um, interpretations. And so it was really kind of sorting through all of those things. But I can't stress enough that the first resource I went to was our people, our elders, and the, the use of our language, um, breaking down each term literally. The, the second question was, how did I identify people? And really 
the most important prerequisite in me choosing someone was making sure that they were fluent and native speakers. Um, the older, the better. You know, uh, I, I just found that different generations had different understandings of some of the phrases too. And so I tried to um, find, find elders that were able to talk to me and who had a lot of experience with the language. So, you know, these are phrases um, and you can speak the language. Maybe there are a lot of people around me who speak fluently because they've learned more recently but they don't have the, the kind of um, the community context that some of these phrases came from, like um, in anti ohos lojizu, like people could understand that they could explain what it means um, with the language, but younger speakers couldn't tell me who that was. And it was uh, Miss LaVon Menel's mother <laughs> uh, helped me kind of break that down. So I, I had to search and I, and I borrowed everyone's Nana and I borrowed everyone's Tata and I'm so grateful for them all. Uh, and it was very special. Um, difference in perspective is the next one. Um, the differences in perspective, which it really kind of shocked me was um, gender had a lot to do <laughs> with how some of the the phrases were interpreted. I think the best example of that was um, min, uh, what was it? Menalik, mina, no, 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 it was Menalik Italian Hinamhum Igima, that phrase. So in general, it means people generally understood it to be like what what all, all that it looks like is not what it seems, right? There's more under the surface. But what I found really interesting was when I asked groups of men, um, especially older men, some of them really attached this understanding of it that the phrase meant you're better off away from home. The, um, and, and a lot of men in their late 60s um, and early 70s were telling me, I've heard it used this way. Uh, it means that you're probably not gonna do well at home and so you have to go, go out. And that was not something I heard expressed by a lot of the elder women that I interviewed about this phrase, because while they agreed that, yeah, it's the not everything is what it seems, they also really attached um, a universal understanding between women that it could also allude to um, darkness in home, like within the context of domestic violence or abuse. That, and so that was really interesting, um, even seeing differences in terms of gender or generation that came out. And so, you know, when you take the time to sit with elders, so many of them, and when they end up having different perspectives, like as a younger Chamorro, you, you get really stuck. You're, you don't want to disrespect anybody. And so I did my best to write my summaries in a way that kind of acknowledged the truth of their different perspectives, so long as I could back it up with other um, resources. Because I, I, I couldn't bring myself to say that, oh, this, Sur this Surahana from, from Dedido, like hers contradicts this other thing. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And so I, I did my best to write in ways that, that included everybody. And some places that that wasn't possible, but I did my very best to do that. Um, credible sources, I think that with oral sayings and oral culture like this, there's nothing more credible than our Sina. And that's just what it was for me. Um, they are credible. Everything they say, said to me, everything they understood of the language to me was true and fact, and I wasn't gonna argue it. Um, that that's what it was, but I did have wonderful resources that were compiled. You know, Polly Eric's blog is the most amazing resource because it also directs you to other things, other transcripts, other places where the phrases have been used throughout history. So to, to, to support it, I did that, but um, I did find that none of our elders were incorrect or contradictory to any of the things that were recorded on the written record. Uh, so 
Our elders are credible resources. Obstacles I encountered. It was not having my own elders. It, it really was um, because I was so used to like walking next door or just calling my grandmother or driving to my uncle Frankie's house. And I was like, oh, that's, that's the obstacle. And so um, there was that. And also pinning them down. Um, you know, sometimes people are more comfortable speaking in person. And so it was like, okay, sneaking over and going to their house and finding ways to like get the answers you need without disrupting other stories they want to tell. You, you end up, I ended up learning a lot more than just was on the list <laughs> because they have so much to say about other things. And once they start talking about one phrase, they have gossip to tell you about someone who's like the phrase and all of these like cans of worms um, open. So I address the challenges by just listening and taking my time and not rushing anyone. And I think I think you this kind of research, you just address it by being quiet. <laughs> like just be quiet and listen and and write it down and, and sort through it and and that's the way I did it. I don't know how else to explain how I address the challenges, but I was really quiet and I listened and I, I wrote and and I asked um, Saina Lo and Anne Marie and the commission to look over it and correct me where they could. And they gave me corrections that that really helped me move along. Um, what do you recommend to those interested in doing this kind of research? I recommend something that our um, director at the press, Victoria, always says is like, record your elders, pay attention to what they're saying, like, make sure that you're, like, everything's valuable. Everything they say is valuable. All their stories are valuable. And I think you'll find this just like in talking to some of our commission members, like NT Lo, I know Hope, like, everything they say has something in it, and you should save it, because you never know when it's gonna come back in handy. So record it, get your recorder, get your notebook um, and be quiet. <laughs> fat kilo, that was a word on my list. Fat kilo, exercise fat kilo as much as possible. Um, and I think those are all of the questions, right, Cody? Yeah, so far so good. And I, <laughs> again, I appreciate your, your insight because I think you touched on a lot of important uh, aspects of our culture. I, and you're not the only one, uh, by the way, so this is going to be very interesting in the next few days, but there are some of these phrases which are culturally inappropriate, mm -hmm. or, uh, for, especially for those of us who are a little bit younger or even of a different gender, uh, to be asking these questions, especially to our manamko. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because that, that is a challenge. It's a cultural challenge. And I think there's something deeper that we need to tap into there. <laughs> yeah, uh, sometimes like, they were I'm, like, I'm, Nanny, why are you asking me that? And then I think like, in asking some of like the nastier ones, like this one old man, he asked me like how many cow he'll have to trade for me. Uh, like just like it leads into really questionable <laughs> discussions, but yeah. I welcome it. I welcome it all. <laughs> for the sake of research, right? Yeah, for the sake of research. <laughs> That's the so just Masi just you know Desri, I, again I really appreciate your insights and I actually would like to open it up I'll open the discussion up now for everyone to kind of participate but, but before we do I just want to uh, reach out to our other uh, mem uh, commission members if they had anything they wanted to impart uh, any sort of uh, any saying if if not we could uh, I'll go ahead and open it up to the uh, to the crowd you know we we touched on a lot of topics today dispenser so you know what? Okay, dispense it. So again, I would like to open it up to everyone uh, um, uh, in the public. You know, do, uh, there are there are a lot of topics that we talked about, and I know some of you have experienced this too, where you want to ask a question, but you believe that it's somewhat inappropriate to ask our manamko. I'll go. Um, we were just talking about one earlier this morning with uh, uh, our our secretary, as uh, Senora Flo. Uh, the word fakai, as mis as misunderstood as it is, she she felt embarrassed to ask her manamku at that time about the word fakai because in her mind, or at least in her understanding at that time, that the word fakai was not a good word to use. I'm sorry, Sonora, that I'm using you as an example, but <laughs> uh, 
she 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 felt she felt embarrassed that she would use that she would even say the word to Armen Amkul. And the only reason why the word came up is because it's in the novena. But gladly and proudly, we have it inside, featured inside this volume and, you know, encourage everyone eventually to, uh, to take a look at that and read it to find, so that way we can actually figure out why did we use this word fakai inside the novena, no? But has anyone else kind of experienced that? Has anyone seen that kind of, um, that kind of issue when we were taught with all these, uh, this, uh, this imbilikeruness that we have, no, uh, of, our, of our language and of our culture? If I could, uh, Cody. Senor, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, the, the word faka is a good example because uh, I've heard that word in context. It just means to divide, uh, to that That's when I first heard it. Mafakaitano, the, the land was divided up. Um, but the, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's used and uh, it's connected to the use of the F word in, in English. And so therefore people uh, were, didn't really understand where it came from. And then now it's reified. It's, it's absolutely reified through a whole uh, line of products. So there's products, there's the slogan, there's fem fakai and all that kind of stuff. And, and nobody really, uh, uh, you know, you, it's like trying to figure out uh, at what point do you just say to people, this is what this is? And uh, this is a vulgar term that really has no uh, use. But then their vulgar terms cross uh, uh, boundaries all the time. And, uh, and uh, so the, the, uh, the vulgar terms like, you know, kaksaka, which is, you know, barred from English and it's cocksucker, but people use it in tomorrow. They don't know that it really began with uh, cocksucker in English. And then uh, the, the overuse of the word uh, carajo in, um, in tomorrow, which in Spanish is a really serious word to use, but we just use it like haphazard, you know. Hey, carajo, you know. <laughs> and uh, Spanish speakers l listen to that and they go, Wow, that's that's really heavy. Why do you guys use that? So, um, you know, and it's just the, the the work. And I wanted to congratulate Desiree for her work because that's a, a really painstaking and and patient effort. And she also touched on an issue that uh, we do have to address, which is that there are gender differences and there are different gender understandings of these terms and. Uh, and uh, you know the the way men talk and the way women talk gonna be different. I mean, it's it's inevitable. They're socialized differently. So uh, I just I just wanted to add. I don't know what you do with that, but it's uh, when when you cut across cultures and languages with different words that are uh, 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 heavily uh, loaded, it, it's very difficult. Who gets to know that? I think I've I think I've experienced that myself sometimes too. Talking to the to the elders at the church is a totally different thing than talking to McDonald's, uh, the elders at McDonald's. I think even yeah. I think even the geographical context is somewhat different. But I, I I completely agree the the gender the idea of gender and the um the way we the way we live it in our culture is very is 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 something to be looked into absolutely. Yeah, and you know I I just hasten to point out that almost everybody involved with this is a woman. <laughs> so, so the question becomes are are we missing something or should we make special effort to get a different point of view that's just that it's just a point for consideration because this whole enterprise is basically run by women the researchers the members of the commission the leadership everything i no, I, have, I have no problem with that i'm just saying that if gender is an issue then a gender perspective needs to kind of be worked on a little bit. So, thank you. Well, well that's why we have Cody uh, <laughs> taking care of this particular project. Of course, the women researchers can always ask the men, and I'm sure they do. How many no, that's not, that's not, that's not my, that that's was not very, my... very um, um, enlightening for me? Um, your what your personal findings. Um, 
And, and Robert uh, mentioned about the gender differences, but I really think that I have a hunch that I think women, you know, because they are around men, have an idea as to how, what men's perspectives are. So even if we can just begin by asking them and then go from there, then we can delve into it further. I'm just not so sure that the men would be as willing to um, to talk about it, you know? Uh, but I don't know whether there's also the issue of Cody, for example, Cody interview interviewing the men and Desiree interviewing the women, or can we, you know, mix them up? I, I that that's also another issue that needs to be addressed. Um, but it is very enlightening. Um, on the term uh, fakai, you know, this is something I've been looking at for the past few days uh, <laughs> for the purposes of this book, and I actually went into all the dictionaries I found, and in fact, I would like to make a plea here. If anybody has the listing by uh, Ibanez del Carmen, um, I would really appreciate a copy of that because for some reason, mine walked out of my uh, shelves and I have no idea who, into whose hands it went in, it went to. So um, I need a copy of that because that goes back to the 1800s, I believe, uh, or 18, early 1800s. Uh, anyways, um, Robert alluded to the changes. I mean, you know, languages evolve, um, and and as indicated in some of the writings, especially in the religious writings, that's where we see a lot of this word, um, uh, fakai, and in the context of, as Robert said, the distribution. But it also, to me, and in re in talking with my elders uh, when they were. Uh, still here with us. It involves, it, it, it also implies the equitable distribution of um, resource, I'll, I'll just say resources, particularly land. And the, uh, like if you went fishing and the fishermen got together, you know, whoever assisted, there's no such thing as that, you know, you only get 10% because you came late or you get 20% or 50% because, you know, you, you brought the gasoline or you, you brought the salads or whatever. It's, it's, an, it's an equitable distribution. And this is really interesting because even in, in, the, in the language and the counting system that was used by the Chamorros, there is a counting system that applies to the distribution of things that the the pati the ap inapati, which um, you know, like if you know two, you get two or two by two or four by four, that sort of thing. Um, but it will be um, I, I a further a fur further research on this would um, really enlighten us a lot. And Robert also alluded to that brand. I was trying to say it last night actually. Uh, uh, with the way, I mean, you know, with the with the rounded um, O, um, and I was trying to, you know, when we see the word and we read the word, we're using what we know of English English pronunciation. So of course, what's going to come out is closer to um, how we say fakai than anything else, right? But uh, there's also this when men are, are are barbecuing, they like to say things like, oh, fuck it up, papa. That's a different meaning from, you know, the fuck it to equi equitably distribute. Because you, when you fuck it, papa, it doesn't mean you're going to put two slices of ribs here and two slices of ribs here and two slices of ribs there. Their intent there is to throw it down, you know, haphazardly doesn't matter whether you mix the chicken or the, the ribs or whether you have the, the pika ribs on this side and the non-pika ribs on this side. It just put it down there on the grill and let it uh, cook, let it um, barbecue so that we can eat it. Um, so, uh, you know, that's another thing that I believe we need to consider is what has come in into the language that has created I won't say a deletion of the original meaning of the word, but has added on to a possible meaning of this word and the context. 
um, so that we have a better understanding. I mean, you know, it certainly will enlighten our children in terms of, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that word and this is how it has changed over the years. It does not, however, say that that original meaning has been lost. But congratulations, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, what is it, volume two? Yes. <laughs> I'm good to know. <laughs> What do you thought, I'm going to have to leave man? because the computer guy, is, uh, the, our technician is coming by to fix my computer so I can actually have a face here. So, Sujos Masi. <laughs> I'll listen este, as long as I can. Esta Sujos Masi, si no den ni patemo. Sign alo, dispenser. So, you, on hot take and I mo, you raise your hand. So, Hungan, Hungan, para pesong na loko yi ginubena ni Santa Maria and Kamalin. Sesu mausa ginubena i palabra fakai and 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 tatatai tai no ilenga pa mo nu inubena fakai ham nu idrashamo but fakai ham nu i ginaizamo but fakai ham nu i ginifliemo right so the the word in that contents is to impart on us no parewa ni original meaning ni mausa ordinario i i fakai kumekilinga right? The equitable distribution, the the showering of uh, blessings and abundance, ginobena siha. Lo, we uh, as Robert pointed out, we have to we have to remember that the that this word that the it, this word is not a borrowed word. This is a, a word is part of our finahada vocabulary, finahada vocabulary that predates the introduction of the word f u c k into our vocabulary. Okay. And that word, that English word, really has nothing to do with the Tamoru word fakai. So we really have to, unlike, for example, kaksika, which is a sexual uh, tomorrowization of cocksucker. That is a very sexual word. And that or, the, the kaksika originated, as Robert pointed out, from the two English words cocksucker. Uh, I hate to say this, but I mean, that's the reality of it all. Right, but fakai is not related to f u c k. Now, when the brand, the when the branding, that T-shirt branding came out, they used the f o umlat, right? The f o umlat to umlat. Uh, the umlat, the double, the double dot on top of the o, um, which was a way of creating the illusion of the a. Ah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. uh, and and so. Uh, you, you, some people thought that that was all, that that was a way of doing the, the lonat. But mm -hmm. there's no mm -hmm. lonat on top of any o gifino tomorrow either. So, I mean, the more we know about the nuances of our language and how we, uh, how the symbols of our language, how we, the orthography of our language, the more we can understand um, origins of words and relationship between words that are borrowed and words that are uh, part of the Finohada uh, vocabulary. So I think that this is a great example of um, an opportunity that the Commission has, has uh, taken to explain that kind of relationship. Yeah. And there are other words, uh, you know, like the word gadegu, which we use, um, you know, which is like a gigolo, right? or a partner outside of marriage. That's not a common usage, but a lot of people that you talk to, I'm sure Des, would, would have recognized that word. So it was yeah. commonly used uh, before the war, for example. A fun one <laughs> to talk about. Yeah. So, I learned from so, that that I mean, we've been using it wrong. Because <laughs> everyone says satmak, uh, right? But satmak is the sexual act and gazegu is the... Or is the partnering? Yeah, uh, yeah, is the partner outside of marriage? But a tagma is usually someone that you might be living with, uh, or hitching up with, you know, or or have it certainly having a long term relationship with, right? Um, tagma involves so the, one has to is probably already is married, committed. Matt Hongan. Hongan. So there are no there are nuances. So the. The cultural dictionary gives us an opportunity to really dig deep into uh, how words and concepts and phrases are used 
so that we can understand them better. And Paka is one example. Inafa Maulik is another example, right? Did you have that word, Des? So what did you learn about Inafa Maulik that was different from what you thought you knew about Inafa Maulik prior? You know, I, um, I think what really became apparent to me was how much the value, it as a core value has been gutted um, and how so much of it has been appropriated for our assimilation and our marginalization as a people. And Inafa Malik is not blindless giving of yourself. It is not a mindless um, relegation of yourself from the middle. It's, it, it's so much deeper than that. And I think it's really important. I, I mean, also all of these sayings as vulgar as they are, the common thing about all of them, even the funny vulgar ones, is that they're rooted in a core tremoral value, Meneskun, in Azuda, in Afamaulik, all of it. They, when you really get to the heart of the conversations, they're all facilitating our values. Um, and in Afamaulik being the core of all of those values, it, it, it's really about our well being as a people. Um, and I, I, I just found that as an island, we need to really come back to the concept of Inafa Malik and think about the way we use it and the way we teach our children Inafa Malik, the way GVB uses it, the way, everything. I, um, and so that's what I, I really took away with me from researching that word. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Is that okay? You know, sorry. Yes, oh, yes, hey, yes. Just um, Cody, uh, we, we'd love to hear from these other folks that are present. Put for both. If anyone else, I mean, we have so many words in here that especially Desiree in particular had uh, had uh, touched on. The, uh, Desiree had touched on the word mesungun, inafa malik, of course, being one of them, geftal. You know, these are all different words that you can find in there that, you know, just a simple translation is not going to complete, completely uh, uh, capture the meaning behind it. You know, we have, we have so many, uh, so many words. I mean, the, everyone always likes to go towards the word, uh, you know, one of the, uh, one of the nearly intra untranslatable Chamorro words that we have. But I, I think there's, there, uh, we're selling ourselves short. We have so many other deep Chamorro words that English words, in my opinion, in, in my humble uh, hope and see to opinion, uh, <laughs> do not do not translate well to English. No, Sonora. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I, but before I, I know some people are uh, about ready to start trying to head out. But I do want to suggest, by the way, that um, what do you call it? If you have any sayings and such that you know that you that you wish the commission to you know. To do some research into, or you know, to, to at least it's for our knowledge, so that way we can start recording these things. You know, put for what let us know. We, you can always email us at the tomorrow at our email, and that's uh, at commission tomorrow. I'm just gonna throw that in here before we continue on commission tomorrow at gmail.com. And I've, I've been posting inside our, ch our chat also a um, a link for all of us to kind of go into to just uh, to fill out before anyone heads out. So just must see, Senora, Senora Victoria dispenses it. Half a day. Uh, awesome work. This was really fun to uh, hear about. Um, Desi, I was wondering if you could share like one of your favorite stories. Like I know oftentimes the words carry like memories and stories. So what's like a really funny one attached to a word um, that really stands out to you? Uh, they were all really, there was a lot of funny ones. Um, I felt like the ones that yielded the funniest stories was Fabulous Dichespas. <laughs> Um, uh, it's like BSing, you know, we all know that person that just talks bubbles and nobody believes them, but we let them go. And it was just fun because that, you know, that was really funny because, um, everyone started naming the person in their family who was fabulous. <laughs> so that was really funny. Um, <laughs> I know I, I learned so much about everyone's families too and like all the gossip about everybody and I enjoy all of that like hearing those things uh oh the other funny sorry the other funny one was Dadao um you know I uh growing up my 
my uncles used to call me Dadao. And I always just thought it meant like feisty. And then upon further research, it was like a dog that was like quick to bark back. And um, it, so I just like learning those things and I started laughing. So that was funny. Um, but there was just so many funny things, Vicky. Like every, uh, it's really fun to talk to our elders. Like it'll, the the happiness you get from doing that will like carry you, lash, feed you for months and months and months. You'll be on a high from it, just from talking to so many elders. It's so fun. It, they're so funny. And we should really give money to Hagatya McDonald's. Des, people don't know what what uh, the treasure of Hagania McDonald's is. Why don't you tell them there's? Because uh, a lot of our of elders, especially a lot of veterans, they go there for breakfast in the morning. Um, and it's just a really great place to, to meet people that are sitting there like for coffee and you always know somebody. Um, some of my aunties that I talked to, for some reason, that was always a meeting spot. They assigned me, like, I don't know, they couldn't drive anywhere but Hagatnya McDonald's. And so I would have these weird conversations in the parking lot of Hagatnya McDonald's with my notebook. Um, but it just is the spot. And there's nice Chamorro art on the wall. And it's centrally located I don't know yeah that there's many magical things about Hagatnya McDonald's <laughs> I'm sorry I'm awkward uh, someone asked you a question Des on the chat it says uh did Desiree did you video your convos did you I redo any recordings I didn't and I wish I did um I took a lot of notes I recorded on my phone but I did not take video. I have some voice recordings, transcriptions, um, but I didn't have video. And I think a lot of that is uh, I'm a little unconfident too. And I just wasn't sure like how naturally the conversation would go with me wielding a camera and asking questions. Like it's, I, I was worried about that too, but I did take voice, voice, um, voice recordings and a lot of notes. Oh, I Malikat, Malikat, it just wants it. Did uh, anyone else have any questions that they wanted to ask Desiree while we're still here with her? I know there, there's some great insights that you have with the, with the, uh, talking to our men, Amko, no? We, we love to talk, but I think that's a, I think that's a plus because uh, I believe a lot of our creativity comes, to, comes out to that, no? especially as a, as a people. It's that. But without further... Oh, Zunora, this pen says it. Yeah. Oh, Cody, are you going to be a song and 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 a and I'm an hudson esti researchers zano anuka na guhamas pratagosa ginin esti na project zano maybe we should like uh, Anne Marie had alluded earlier na maybe we should uh, record this and and this can be archived uh, you know because. Uh, the value of our project really went beyond what we imagined it uh, it would accomplish rather than just teaching and learning and not being the language it really went beyond what we had thought we would accomplish so I am gratified to hear uh, the experiences of this one researcher but I'm sure that the other researchers experience very similar uh, experiences. To just ma see it. Oh, maulig na question. Nigaigi ki chat. Komatugi leblo ki fino tsumoro dan fino English, pa fino English sa solo. Todo i dos. 
todo y dos. Mm-hmm. Pues fino tomorrow, zangi fino inglés. Todo y dos. So just mercy. That's a good point to bring up. Uh, the, the question was, the, uh, did we write the, uh, is the book written in tomorrow in English or just English? It is actually written and translated to, uh, to and from both languages. So we had writers that wrote it, uh, for, uh, um, excuse me, beginning in tomorrow. And we had writers who, so, who began in, in English as well. So it's a, it's a very interesting effort. Uh, we have uh, many, many hands that were a part of this. And I, I, because, um, thanks for, so just Masi, that's a good segue for me to uh, give agradecimento to our two translators, that's Sinora and uh, Anne Rivera. And of course, you Sinora Janice Tovez. Sinora Janice Tovez was here earlier, but she had to step out. But to do this, it's a it was a definitely a community effort because we had so like I said so many hands that were involved so many uh, so many different experiences and contexts that were here. Esa, pues, without further ado, I, unless our menina uh, object is that they have anything else to um, to empathy. Cody, can I just uh, support what you've just said about the style of the the writing, the the writers did the research and wrote the core uh, you know context for the for the phrase or the or the concept and then it was given to a translator so if it was written tomorrow it was given to an english to someone to translate into english the same person didn't do both and the reason we decided to do that was not just because uh, our english writers didn't know tomorrow and vice versa but because it's always good to get uh, different perspectives. We also took very careful uh, concern that we would not translate verbatim because verbatim translation is so stilted. And and un pupula ifino English para ifino tomoru gof natalik and verbatim. You know what I mean? And vice versa. Za nakonya ifino tomoru ki ifino English. In any case, whatever we say, so we also uh, tried to to create some balance in in the style of translation. We tried to convey the idea, but not necessarily word for word. So that that was something that's important to keep in mind. The other thing is is that in the in the cultural dictionary, you're going to find the etymology of the words that were that were used. Okay, so you'll find a boxed area that identifies the 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 holy palabra because that's so very important if you know tomorrow we have so we we always identify hali palabra gi e frasa or sino gi e palabra mismo okay and if a word is a affixed word o tutalu no manaklaru e affix ni ma usa no and then in the english part I think it's in the English section, right, Cody, that we have the examples. Taimano maas usanya i frasa pat i palabra inti sinangan. So we have the way that you would use the word gifino English and then translate it. The meaning is translated. Uh, I'm sorry, fino tamoru, and then the meaning is translated into English. So we have that as well examples of how to use the phrase how to use the concept uh in ordinary speech okay so we tried to provide um as many useful features to accompany the uh discussion of the word and its context as 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 much as possible and it's in both english and tomorrow so most importantly it's in tomorrow and english the tori tempo if you know them no mas fin mas for na ki i otu na lingua hi si ha no ungan por favor esta pues ta antes di pata ta na na fonaz nesti ta lo en donkulo na sejos masi para todos hamzu ni kana ton mizo i i would like to just go ahead and put out here again a little uh, a shameless uh, plug for our our website Please feel, uh, again, many resources available there for all of us. Uh, and of course, you could again, like I said, you could always email us uh, for any sort of information about the dictionary as soon as it becomes printed. And with, uh, I would also like to give again a little bit of acknowledgement for Dr. Francine Napati for her contribution as well, as well as to all of our staff and the member Nikumashon. Uh, 
before we head out, I would kindly ask everyone again to try and fill out that, um, that form. Again, that would be giving us a lot of help for, uh, for today and for the next few days. And I, I highly encourage everyone, by the way, to sign in again tomorrow. It's, 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 a, it's the similar setup, but it's with the different writer. And as we know, and as we've experienced already today from our conversation, you know, these things, it, it differs with every person. We, some, uh, some, per, some writer might have a different context that they may have uh, tapped into. Some writer might have uh, found some sort of hidden uh, piece of knowledge that we've never heard of before. So who knows what we'll be able to find out tomorrow. And again, I highly encourage everyone to uh, join us tomorrow again. Same time, same link, and same people. I'm just kidding. We're going to have someone else coming too. But, yes, uh, no. This answer. Yes. You know that. Well, we'll have problems in your survey because you know that you're going to be a little bit. Oh, this answer is up. Vanani is a dot. It's a dot from Maliki dot. I do. It's a technology. You are filling out the survey. Just give us a moment after we get off and uh, uh, get out. Cody will fix it so that uh, everyone can... Okay. 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 So the survey again, I just, uh, I'll re-put it again just in case, but uh, please, please uh, fill this out for our sake. So you know that? Oh, you better be... No, yeah, a biba ham to todo duni in Tetsegui Estids and no Malagua Zuna be a goggle e dota audience, maybe and man matu totia gupa, co cinema and manunulisia, a frosa, per palabras, ni malago and a man malago and a perata ilo. Sidusmasi Esther, Ungan Sidusmasi. Adios todos. Then, viva tomorrow. Viva tomorrow. Then, viva. Viva tomorrow. Viva. 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 Mariana